Punk rock. A fast, loud, and deliberately offensive style of rock music. That's what the definition is. At least the back of my shirt says so. Now, does that hold up nowadays? It's kind of a case-by-case -case basis. They're all the same, especially if they're political. But in Guttermouth's case, they've always kind of been the odd one out there. In a community based on individualism, they stick out like a sore thumb because of their crass humor and the fact that all the stuff that is kind of, you know, well-liked in punk, Mark Adkins being the farthest thing from left wing, as he's told me himself, he ain't like that shit. He doesn't like anarchy. He doesn't like hippies. He doesn't like any of that shit. Nonetheless, they're one of my favorite bands I'm ever probably going to review on this. I saw Guttermouth about three years ago, and before that, I definitely, of course, knew about them. I first heard about them in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 for the PlayStation 1. Not 2, but 1. I beat the career mode with my custom skater, and it unlocked a Bales compilation that had I'm Destroying the World playing along to it. Now, it wasn't in the soundtrack options during gameplay, for the PlayStation 1, it was kind of cut out for space. But then when I heard it in the Bales compilation, I was just like, what the fuck is this country shit? I mean, I like it, it's pretty cool, but what the fuck is this shit? I later found out that was one of Guttermouth's more unique songs. And later on in their discography, they would show to do a lot of those, especially on Gusto. But nonetheless, they're definitely one of my favorite bands I've seen live. I actually met Mark Adkins when I saw them. I still had long hair and I still dressed like a stereotypical punk. He didn't judge me, but nonetheless, he kind of did when I heckled him on stage, but he only made fun of my hair. Now enough about me and how much I wigged out when I met him. Let's talk about the actual CDs. I don't know what CD everybody likes more than the other or anything like that, but in my opinion, my least favorite Guttermouth album has got to be Friendly People. Now there's a lot of great songs on this, and it has one of the best closings ever. But in my opinion, if you swapped out this one with their first one and made Friendly People the first LP, it would have been a little bit more passable considering it kind of sounds like a debut album, but it's not. It kind of fell short a little bit with me just because it was kind of bland compared to their other stuff. Not the best release in my opinion, albeit it has some pretty fucking good songs on it. Up next, I have to say is Eat Your Face. The one thing that kind of sets itself on the top of things I don't like on this record is the kind of the interludes between all the songs. I'm not the biggest fan of that, honestly. I like an album that flows. Party of Two is definitely one of my favorite political songs. I don't mind if people want to be on either side of the spectrum with their songs. If you want to be anti-flag, go ahead. Be my guest. I implore that stuff. But as somebody who doesn't like either side of the political spectrum, Party of Two is one of my favorites because, you know, it's kind of like saying, hey, I think they're both stupid. That's definitely one of my favorites from the album, of course, but apart from that, there are songs like Octopus Hairpiece that's pretty funny. Toilet Stall Humor is a pretty good song despite its weird title, and of course, who doesn't fucking know what Hot Dog to the Head really fucking means? Up next is Shave the Planet. The latest and probably last full length by them, I really don't know. But still, this one's a pretty goddamn good record. It sticks to their formula of crass humor and kind of like, haha, stupid ass motherfuckers over here. You got songs like Burn It Down, which is a song that's very relevant, in my opinion. And we also got pretty funny songs like Mark the Chubby Chaser, and you also got Space Cockroach, and all those other good songs that are just kind of funny. It's short and sweet. It has, I think, the least amount of songs out of all the album. I think it only has 10 songs. But still, front to back, it's a pretty funny record. Fullcom Records, I don't know why they would release this, but, you know, I didn't know the one brand in the Tony Hawk games that's just kind of there had a record label. But here we are. It's just a pretty good record. It starts out pretty damn good, and it ends, you know, with kind of like a worker's anthem, which is kind of like a... Uh, kind of reminds me of Irish drinking game from Whose Line Is It Anyway? You know, it's it's an alright closer, not my favorite. Overall though, it's not a bad record. They don't play any of these songs from this record live, which is a damn shame. I would love to hear Burn It Down live. You know, is what it is. Up next on this record has got to be Gorgeous. For a record called Gorgeous, I don't know why the fuck that motherfucker's on the cover. I don't know who the fuck that is. But overall, pretty goddamn good record. Encyclopedia Brown is pretty funny. Dreaded Sea Lice Has Come is a fucking amazing song about a voyage gone wrong. 
I Have a Dream is also fucking hilarious. I also like how at the end it has kind of a long skit about a hard rock band playing at a church and how they're very loud and there's also a moshing area. They're trying to explain this shit to what seems like a church. That's pretty fucking funny. It's an alright record. I know a lot of people really didn't like this record from what I heard, but up next it's gotta be Gusto. As much as this record is very different, it's still, you know, one of my favorites from them. Vacation is a fucking fantastic song. It's the first song I ever learned when I got my drum set, and it's just a fun song to listen to. Twins is a fantastic song. Scholarship and Punk is pretty funny. Contribution is a fucking damn good song. Could have That song could have fit on any of their records, honestly. You could have put that song on Terry Akimoto, or maybe even covered with Ants. You know, I just liked it because, you know, it kind of holds a little bit of sentiment to me. It was one of the first gutter mouth records that I ever bought. Here's what the record falls under, actually. It's so bad, it's good. Let's just say that. It's so different, it's uniquely kind of still a guilty pleasure, at least. I want to say up next has got to be their first album full-length LP. Like I said before, I like this one a little bit more than Friendly People because it just has more of their iconic songs on it, like 1-2-3 Slam, Bruce Lee vs. The Kiss Army. It's just got great songs, and it flows fantastic, and it's just... It's just a great album. It starts out with racetrack and it has a weird reggae ending. And in a good way, and I mean this in a most positive way, this album goes to show that once you've heard one Guttermouth song, you've heard them all. It's all crass humor. It's very funny. It's very fucking catchy. Like Finn McKenty said, objectively fucking terrible, but still a fucking fantastic band that every 14 year old snot nosed kid would start if they could. It's edgy fucking humor in a punk band. What more do you fucking ask for, you know? Up next, I want to say is Teriyaki Moto. This album is fantastic. It has the 70s. It has A Day in the Office, which is a weirdly catchy song. It has Whiskey, fucking awesome song with a funny-ass music video, especially the beginning of that. Fucking fantastic. God's Kingdom is, I want to say, a knack at religion. And thought-provoking Sonic Device makes fun of people who are glued to their TVs. I absolutely fucking love those songs. This one's a keeper in my eyes. These next two records I'll never get sick of. Doesn't matter how many times I play them. Number two is Covered With Ants. I was kind of looking at these albums when I first got into Guttermouth and I found out that Covered With Ants has the highest rating on, you know, from their Wikipedia page it shows. I know that's not the most reliable thing, but it showed that this album had four and a half stars, I think, from all music. But yeah, the rating doesn't lie, man. This album is fucking fantastic from the front to back. That's Life is a pretty kind of weird song, but it also has other songs like Can I Borrow Some Ambition? Looking Good is All That Matters is pretty funny. I Won't See You in the Pit makes fun of people who are punk by the book. Also, you know, kind of posers a little bit. Hence the fact I won't see you in the pit. And the first Guttermouth song I ever heard, I'm Destroying the World, is also on this album. And I am so fucking glad that when I saw them live, they played that song. Which of course they fucking would. And yeah, cram it up your ass, fucking best, funniest fucking thing that I've ever heard at the very end of an album. It's just the same damn thing for like five minutes. Overall, that rating does not lie with this album. If you wanted to get into Guttermouth, I would either start with this album, or you would start out with my number one pick, in my opinion, Musical Monkey. I have no anecdotal evidence or any evidence whatsoever, but I guarantee you, if I were to find another Guttermouth fan that was as big of a Guttermouth fan as me, they would have to say at least fucking Musical Monkey is in their top three. This is the album that has the most fucking awesomest, funniest, catchiest fucking Guttermouth songs ever. Lucky the Donkey, Big Pink Dress, Gold, What's the Big Deal? It makes fun of extreme metal music with their song Corpse Riding in Hell or Riding Corpse in Hell. And you can't not, you cannot get more fucking gutter mouth than the song Lucky the Donkey. When they played this song live when I saw them, I was arm in arm with my buddy Ryan Paul and I was screaming the lyrics in his face the whole time, out of breath. It was pretty fucking funny. Overall, nothing of substance has been said this entire video because I'm just a guy talking about bands he likes. I'm very aware of that. But then again, I'm not Anthony Fantano. So, overall, Guttermouth's amazing. You don't have to like his political views, but their music, anybody can enjoy that shit. I'll see you guys in the next cover. Don't know when that's going to be. My guitar's getting some upgrades. See you later, guys.